Bonjour à tous. Hello, everyone. Um, so my presentation is about a multidisciplinary and multi-institutional environmental study in West Central Alberta, and more specifically in the Fox Creek area. Uh, my talk today will mainly focus on the work related to hydrogeology for this project. So I'll skip the uh, okay. I'll skip the abstract for the presentation. Um, this project involves many people, notably because it became in fall 2019 one of the federal government projects um, to study cumulative effects. Therefore, the project scope is now much larger and includes or will include um, uh, studies on vegetation, forests, wetlands and landscape uh, evolution. And we'll also provide uh, some information for a pan-Canadian study on the woodland caribou habitat. This project involves research scientists uh, from the federal and provincial governments and university professors, as well as grad students. This project is supported um, by the Groundwater Geoscience Program, of course, but also by the Environmental Geoscience Program and the Initiative on uh, Cumulative. So now uh, the study area is located just uh, southwest of the town of Fox Creek in uh, West Central Alberta. Uh, about halfway between Edmonton and Grand Prairie. Uh, it extends over 700 square kilometers, uh, shown in pink on the map. This area is mainly forested and unpopulated, so there are no residential or farm wells uh, in this area. The only water supply wells uh, belong to oil and gas operators. Uh, Fox Creek was selected because it has been one of the most active regions for oil and gas uh, production in Canada over the last 50 years, and it has experienced some of the largest induced seismic events in the country related to hydraulic fracturing. Um, the original bedrock aquifer is located in the Pascapoo Formation. Uh, it is a non-marine unit that corresponds to a complex succession of interbedded mudstone and siltstone with sandstone channels. The Pascapoo Formation is the most important groundwater supply in the province. Um, the Fox Creek project has three objectives that are related to the three sources of funding. Uh, first, to characterize the regional non saline aquifer located in the Pascapoo Formation. Second, to investigate the integrity of the intermediate zone uh, using geochemistry and a geomechanical study. Uh, for those of you that are not very familiar with uh, this term, the intermediate zone corresponds to the zone located in between the surficial aquifers here, mainly in the Pascapoo Formation, and the unit targeted by the industry here, the Duvernay Formation. This zone controls the vulnerability of surficial aquifers to potential contamination that could come from activities at depth. And the third objective is to assess environmental uh, cumulative effects, um, including a general study that aims to identify existing challenge and barriers and to make recommendations for improving the current process. Nine monitoring wells were drilled and logged uh, last fall, and one of these was drilled on an active oil and gas well pad. Limited sampling could be done in 2020, but we at least collected drill cuttings, um, surficial sediments, and some groundwater samples. Groundwater sampling for the full suite of analysis was completed this August. As we were able to establish agreements with two oil and gas operators to sample 13 water wells in addition to our nine monitoring wells, um, this allows us to have a relatively good spatial coverage. Slug tests were performed in the monitoring wells and permeability tests in surficial sediments are being conducted. This will allow us to obtain hydraulic conductivity values. For a master's degree on soil moisture and snow cover, uh, lysimeters, soil moisture sensors, rain gauges, and rain collectors uh, were recently installed at five sites in both vegetated areas and non-vegetated areas. So areas impacted by oil and gas activities, uh, such as along seismic lines uh, or pipelines. The locations of the eight monitoring wells uh, drill on Crown land are illustrated on this map along with their total depth. Um, an example of a well log is, um, is presented uh, to the right. 
as expected in this heterogeneous bedrock formation, um, each well turned out to be very different from the other with widely varying percentages of fine grained rocks versus sandstone, a number of fractured zones and flowing fractures, etc. This is why borehole logging was so important. A gauging station was also installed on Tony Creek uh, last fall, um, as we need this information uh, to be able to calibrate the numerical models. However, an animal chewed the cable at several locations last November, and the probe was also carried away over several meters. Um, so a whole new setting has been put in place to try to avoid these problems this time in this uh, shallow stream. The objectives uh, of the borehole geophysical logging uh, were mainly uh, to identify lithological, hydrological, and mechanical structural conditions in the near surface bedrock and to support the shallow aquifer characterization by um, selecting depths for screen installation since rock of the Pascal formation is very friable, uh, so wells needed to be cased uh, and screened. Um, also identifying fluid pathways and the um, hydraulic gradients. And finally, providing a near surface data sets uh, to examine continuity to shallow, uh, of shallow to deep uh, geomechanical properties. The three types of logs were collected for almost all monitoring wells, and these data are currently being analyzed. Here are some images um, by the, obtained by the camera in the bedrock section in three of the monitoring wells. Um, the image to the left um, shows uh, water flowing down, and the other uh, two uh, show di different uh, but highly fractured intervals. Our preliminary results uh, show that groundwater is cold uh, between four and six degrees, uh, reflecting the climate uh, in this area, and flows naturally in all monitoring wells. Downward flow occurs in most of them. Floor piece appears to be occurring uh, both along fractures and through uh, permeable uh, sandstone. Density and velocity values are being estimated um, to eventually obtain uh, geomechanical properties. And structural features uh, show that most bedding is nearly horizontal and only a few um, high angle joints that could be observed. Since the Pascal formation is poorly consolidated and drilling was done using a hammer drill rig, um, borehole walls are very rough and this influences results. Uh, so all the logs need to be wisely uh, combined uh, to obtain representative results for information. Rumor samples have been sent to various labs um, in August, and at this time, only general chemistry and results related to methane have been uh, received. This map shows the water types for our monitoring wells, and we can see that only two types were found, calcium bicarbonate and sodium bicarbonate, um, typical of relatively uh, young water. Results from oil and gas uh, operator wells cannot be shown on this map for the moment, but they provide similar values or results. As our monitoring wells uh, were screened into shaley intervals, uh, unlike a conventional water well, um, to try to sample more evolved, uh, older water, uh, these results show that even groundwater flowing through poorly permeable layers of the Pascapu formation is relatively young, thus indicating that common exchanges between the succession of sandstone and shaley intervals take place. Of the nine groundwater samples collected last year, uh, only one contained methane, uh, the deepest, deepest uh, monitoring well. This year, only three wells contain a small amount and none from our monitoring wells. Um, all of them have uh, an origin that is clearly microbial according to their isotopic values. Paralysis or hog analysis of sediment samples from our monitoring wells are, were also conducted, uh, notably because the Pascapu formation is known to locally uh, contain coal. Although our groundwater samples did not show the presence of thermogenic gas, um, it's still relevant to do the analysis of all possible sources uh, of a type of contaminant that you're looking for, hydrocarbons in, in our case, uh, within the framework of an uh, environmental study. 
So if in the future some hydrocarbons were found, this source would have already been characterized. A total of 97 samples um, were analyzed uh, for organic matter characterization and uh, thermal maturity of organic rich intervals. 18 samples were selected for further uh, petrographic analysis based on their um, higher total organic uh, carbon content. Thermal maturity varies from immature to mature, but most samples uh, correspond to uh, immature source rock. The presence of microbial gas is um, likely associated to the presence of coal here because methanogenes uh, can feed on the higher uh, organic matter content of this rock compared to the rock of the, the rest of the Pascapu formation. I will now present the results of the two-dimensional hydrogeological model um, that has recently been completed in FlowNet uh, using steady state and confined uh, conditions. This figure presents the final, this calibrated version of the model. Uh, it includes uh, the upper four bedrock formations, which are from the oldest to the youngest, the Wapiti, Battle, Scholard, and Pascapu. Um, these non-marine formations are composed of sandstone, mudstone, and siltstone, except for the battle formation, which is mudstone dominated and thus considered nearly impermeable. The battle formation is, however, very thin and can even be discontinuous as it was completely eroded in some regions. This figure also illustrates that the Pascapu formation was divided into two layers uh, since the upper 100 meters is more fractured and thus more permeable. The upper part of this formation was further divided into three sections in order to have the simulated water table close to the water table obtained with the piezometric map based on available hydraulic conductivity data, of course. The figure on the right uh, shows the final simulated water table. The fit with the interpolated water table is considered good with a root mean square error of 7%. Um, it is important to note though that the observed water table shown here was extracted from the piezometric map, which was obtained from cridging with an external drift uh, using topography as a secondary parameter as groundwater level data are not well spatially distributed at all. Um, that's giving a lot of weight to the topography where there are no data available. Therefore, the real water table um, is probably lower than what is shown here on the figure, um, especially just north of uh, Tony Creek where amount is present. Um, the last figure on the bottom right shows, as expected, that flow is uh, mainly concentrated in the, the upper part of the model and especially in the first 100 meters where higher hydraulic conductivity values have been assigned in the Pascapu formation. It also shows that there are nearly two distinct hydrogeological systems as separated by a nearly impermeable uh, unit, the battle formation, identified by the blue arrow on the right. Um, as this project aims to assess potential impacts of activities carried out at depth on shallow aquifers, uh, we wanted to see if or when upward flow can occur in the system. We thus simulated a window in the battle formation, which was designed based on cross sections of the provincial uh, geological model in this area. Um, for the base case scenario, where all um, values are the same as those used uh, for the model shown on the previous slide, except for the window, uh, we see that groundwater is always flowing downward. The figure on the right now shows the conditions for which we begin to see upward flow. Hydraulic heads in the Wapiti formation must be increased by more than 100 meters compared to the base case, so this seems quite unlikely. Although the provincial map um, on which hydraulic head values of the Wabiti formation were taken um, does not have much data and an area just northeast of our study area shows this range of values. So this possibility cannot be completely ruled out. A 2D model in CATHI, a coupled surface water groundwater model is currently under development by the same student. In addition to the 2D models, a 3D hydrogeological model in FIFLO is also being developed by another student. This model comprises the same uh, geologic 
formations uh, as the 2D model presented um, and is also based on the same uh, geological model developed by the province. This model uses the same hydraulic conductivity values as the 2D model, except for the upper part of the Pascapu formation, where for the moment a single value um, is being used uh, that is about an order of magnitude higher than that of the 2D model. This value is in fact closer to the median value reported in the literature and the provincial uh, database. Um, this 3D model is being run using an unconfined top aquifer and for the moment acid state conditions. Um, based on our work in general and literature, uh, recharge appears to uh, be quite low and should range between 0 and 70 millimeters per year. Um, so recharge values between 10 and 70 millimeters per year uh, were assigned in, in this model and provided errors between um, simulated and interpolated heads uh, ranging from 8 to 15 percent. Some heterogeneity will be integrated to this model to better understand the hydrodynamics uh, close to the surface and uh, between shallow and deeper units. The same student will also develop an eco-hydrogeological model using NOAA MP and CAPI in the next phase of this work. The general study on cumulative effects comprises three sub-objectives um, to achieve the last one, to make recommendations uh, to try to improve the current cumulative effects assessment process. To reach these objectives, uh, 15 semi-structured interviews with environmental assessment practitioners from different provinces and federal government managers were conducted, and five focus groups with uh, indigenous uh, communities and committees from Quebec and Alberta were held. The collective information is currently being analyzed using a specialized uh, software and results will be available in the next few months. Thank you very much.